place wishes to welcome you to the 74th Grey Cup Championship. Amateur de football, bienvenue au staff BC Place pour le 74e match de la Coupe Grey. Introducing the starting offensive lineup of the Eastern Champions. I've probably seen this game probably about maybe, I'd say, 10 times. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Every once in a while you feel nostalgic and you go, I want to look when I look skinny. <laughs> I press the button and watch it. It's, you know, you, YouTube is great for everything. You want to watch something? Click and the I, button. And I didn't even play in this game, but this was my first ring, right? And we had been here twice before, so I get excited. I get chills watching. I, I do too. You know, I love seeing Ben because we took a limo to the game, and this is what I said to Ben and Paul Bennett and Dan Huckluck. You look good. You feel good. You play good. We went out there and crushed them like they were little bugs. So look, look at the seriousness on everybody's face. Yeah. This is what Damon Allen was saying. He goes like, I looked over at you guys and you were like. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, were, we were bound and determined after losing two in a row, right? Yeah. I'll never forget, we were sitting in the locker room. Everybody, we had, a, we had stone faces on. There was no way we were going to lose that third great cup. There's no way. I guess you never get used to it, but... Uh... Certainly, we're pretty experienced at just the whole Grey Cup week and knowing what to expect. Obviously, it translated into a, a good product for us on the field. No disrespect, and they had a great team, but, but we was just, um, it's just something about, we was just ready to play. Left guard, garde à gauche, numéro 58, number 58, Jason Riley. Right guard, guard that one. Oh, look at that. Look at this guy. Hey, young man. Man, I take that guy out. <laughs> now my mom wants me to get that haircut again. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> and the rest of the Hamilton Tiger Cats and his own champion de l'Est. During the course of regular season play, the Edmonton Eskimos yielded one less point than the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And these two teams over their last dozen games. Edmonton with a 9-2-1 run record, Hamilton 8-3-1. Remember, Hamilton started 1-5, and, and that 8-3-1 record coincides with the emergence of Mike Kerrigan as a starting quarterback. There's another statistic that should be remembered. Hamilton has not beaten Edmonton in their last 15 games. It's almost inevitable that that streak has to end sometime, doesn't it? We're pumped up. The two teams are pumped up. Let's go to the field right now as we prepare for the opening kickoff. And it will come to Bender at the 14-yard line. So from their 28, Kerrigan comes out throwing. Just as well for him that the ball was underthrown because Greg Harding would have been in the end zone going the other way looking for Steve Stapler was Kerrigan. And let me tell you something about Mike Kerrigan. He has completed 57% of his passes, but he did have a lot intercepted. This time he fires over the head of Walter Bender, and that is not exactly what the Ticats wanted. They wanted to come out, establish some kind of an offense, and instead it's two plays and out. Leaf, I think if there's one big advantage in this football game, and especially teams, I think it's right now Paul S. Balderson is likely to, going to be outkicked quite badly today. That is not a particularly good kick, except this much. He got a good roll out of it. Tom Richards was not able to catch it on the fly. Dunnigan was hit from behind. The ball comes loose. And Hamilton has recovered at the 35. Big Grover Covington, number 77, a guy who's going to put all kinds of pressure, and there is Leo Ezrins. Leo, well, Leo you got you in there and got that Leo. one the first play of the game? How Leo. about you, Leo? How about you? I happen to be the guy with the... Well, Grover has to have the right mic. Yeah. Is that who strips him, Solvay? No, Leo. Oh, you're Leo? I, I just uh, saw it there, man. Big Daddy Mitch recovered. It was like everything was in slow motion. All you could see is a... That football, right? Yeah, You're picking bouncing. up the scraps. Yeah. <laughs> hey, somebody's got to do it. Might as well be me. No. Kerrigan going deep. Touchdown, Hamilton. Steve Stapler. The little double pump fake. And Stapler got in behind the corner, Greg Harding. A beautiful throw, Pat. Does that remind you of Stapler's catch in the Eastern final game? Just a perfect throw by Mike Kerrigan. 
Well, Riggs, I suspected they were going to go after Greg Harding because he's the guy you can get in behind. Stapler ran a hook and go, a perfect throw by Mike Kerrigan. And, you know, when you get a turnover, you, of course, love to take advantage of it. Hamilton did it pretty quickly. <laughs> One play drive. We had a couple of rah-rah guys on our team. You know, on offense, it was Jason. Jason was a guy always cheering and making everybody realize that we were doing good. And Frank Robinson was the guy on defense, right? He, ben was just like, get out of my way, I'm going to kill you. And, you know, Ben, Ren, you know, was like, but Frankie was always cheering and always happy. A lot of prep. Jason, Jason was our protector. What? We were so determined that we weren't going to let up. We were going to keep the pedal on the metal, right? It's second down, six yards to go. Kerrigan lops it out there to Bender. He wasn't able to make the catch. The ball was right on the money, but Craig Schaefer was right on Walter Bender. The best is seeing Jackie Parker on the sidelines. And my dad and I, for 10 years, probably had a very acrimonious life of a father and a son, not appreciating my lifestyle, which would have probably been a little different than most <clears throat> athletes. But anyways, I got to take him to the Shenley Awards that year. They were called, you know, for the players. And he got to meet his hero, Jackie Parker. And he said, all I want you to do is crush that team. Jackie Parker's my hero, but now I've met him. We're good. <laughs> and my dad and I became best of friends, and I talked to him three times a week now, four times a week, still to this day, all from this game, because he got to meet Jackie Parker. That's really, that's a cool you know, story. Because he went, that is he awesome went to the 55 Grey Cup, 56, 57. He lived in Edmonton. He was a huge Edmonton. They were living in Edmonton at this time. Leo, around the ball. Way to go, Ben. <clears throat> Split us. Yeah, ben. Good job, Benny. Yeah, first snake bit so far. Looks like Ben Zambiazzi making the play. The outstanding middle linebacker, number 31 of the Ticats, and the second big turnover of the football game in the first five and a half minutes goes once again against the Eskimos. Well, it's Zambiazzi who really strips the ball loose from Chris Skinner. That was a great throw by quarterback Matt Dunnigan. A good play, and Skinner's got to hang on. Now, he's had trouble late in the year hanging on to the football, but at this point in time, not too many things going right for the Eskimos. Me and Marv Alamang went into Tequila Willie's one time for just for a night out, just the two of us for some beers and grub. And we walk in the door and there's Matt Dunnigan sitting with a couple of his receivers from Toronto. I don't know what the heck they were doing in Burlington well, from Toronto. Matt, he lived in... Uh, he lived, probably lived in, in the area. Mississauga, right close And out. you know what he said? He recognized us right away and he said, you guys sit down right here. He says, you're not buying a drink all night. We sat and drank free beer all night because Matt Dunnigan was such a class guy. He's a class guy. No he is a class guy. He just thought he could run over too many guys. Yeah. I got nothing bad he to never, say. Nothing. He threw me a lot of picks. I like him. <laughs> I, I got a that. couple off him too. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have. He's a stud. I got a couple beers, but I didn't get no picks. Second down, ten yards to go. Hamilton Kerrigan looks, fires, going deep again for Stapler, and he's got the football inside the forty-yard line at the thirty-five. Oh, at this point. The, the, I already know the, I already know the outcome. Our, I, I have, I'm a dreamer, so I dreamt this game like six <laughs> weeks. This is my ninth year in the league. I already knew what the ben outcome was. Leo, I've never played in a great cup game, and all I want to do is win this game, and I don't get I walked off ass. this field, and I think I was four points off my whatever the score was. I was like four points different. In your dream? In my dream prior to us. <laughs> 37 is Terry Lane. Marco Sincar lines up opposite him, but the ball is handed inside to Milson Jones, and Jones gets to about the 39-yard line with a pickup of about four yards. Every year prior to this, it was the same thing. Yeah. It was the same, same core. It was the same kind of same kind of pattern. We don't start off very good. We're not losing by it. We're not getting blown out. We're just not winning some games. We just haven't cohesively come together. We're playing ourselves into shape. And the thing some is, guys, Al, some Bruno, guys. Al Bruno was Hello. a player's coach, and he always like brought vets. us together. By the end of the year, we were all playing well. We are playing together. Well, as you can see, it's been anything but an offensive display to this point. 
yard speed. I got a clock there. Forced out right at the yardstick. Yeah. That was Today's a peel that, 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 that was a crackback. Yeah. No call. That uh, wasn't a bad one, but it got me. And you probably got up and said, good hit. Right? I didn't say nothing. <laughs> I just got the number. See how we're talking now. It's second down, 11 yards to go. Edmonton with the ball on Hamilton's side of midfield as a penalty marker comes down. And Nelson Jones doesn't catch the football. Now, I watch you in this game, Ben. <laughs> Like, your energy was contagious. Because <laughs> I look at myself, there's times where I'm, like, my hands on my knees. Like, I was exhausted. That it was game. hot in that building. In the building and going up to the game, like, I was exhausted. and didn't realize it until after the game. Like, I, I think I slept for a week. I remember Al's always, his uh, favorite line was uh, when people said we were losing a step, and he would always say, well, at least when you have experience, you know where that step's going to be. So, uh he took a lot of heat for guys, uh, especially when some of us had bad games, and he stuck with us, and uh, I'm glad it paid off for him. What a beautiful punt by Dixon to Paul Bennett at the eight-yard line. Now, that's the best job that the cover team of the Eskimos has done here this afternoon. They're down to limit him to a return of just six yards after a 45-yard punt. Steve? Pat, I'm standing on the sidelines behind the Hamilton bench holding the helmet that belongs to David Sobe. You can see the shamrock. This is in honor of the late King Clancy, a good friend of the Hamilton Ticats and, of course, a good friend of their owner, Harold Ballard. We He's lost King Clancy this year Yeah, because yeah. he'd been to the previous two cups. Yeah, and we all went to the funeral and training camp that year. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Got, we got the buses we went to yeah. Toronto. Yeah, we wore the shamrock, and then we got the shamrock on the ring. They, There's they Harold right there. Early. There's, There's Harold, Harold right there. And then he put those half carat diamonds on our rings. He said we were the first team that gave him a championship, right? Yeah. So oh, he, he loved it. Put yeah. a half carat diamond with the tiger cat jumping on it. It's a beautiful ring. From the Hamilton 48 yard line, it is first down for Matt Dunnigan. And now he's going for the bundle. And oh, well, this was, that could have been a disaster there. We that kind of was their game. We almost picked that That kind of like uh, yeah. epitomized what they were in for. We start the second quarter. It is second down, 10 yards to go. Dunnigan again in trouble. The ball again comes loose. Leo Esrins was there to make the tackle. Sam Biasi was there to recover the football. Hamilton has it back in Edmonton territory. Better give you another one, man. Double. Leo Cleaned starts, it up. Good job, Leo, Leo starts the game off and then starts off the what the second quarter? At the beginning of each quarter, you got you got the win, <laughs> you got your win back. <laughs> yeah. it's downhill from there then. I mean, after the halftime rest, I was fine. <laughs> oh, oh, Leo got Leo, got Leo is that you got the sack in yeah. the strip? There's no sack. Yeah, because Oh, that's right. Today the, the rules back then, if you fumbled the ball. I know. Back fumble is no sack. So we had, we haven't mentioned it yet, right? We had on the, on the stat sheet 10 sacks that game. Yeah. But if you would have measured the definition of sack, it was in today's terms, we would add 16. Because we really? caused six fumbles That's that wild. turned over. Allen's pass intercepted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Howard so, Fields. Oh, who peeled back? Me. Because oh. you can't do that oh. anymore either. You can't do that. <laughs> he was you coming face on, on though. Anymore. Yeah. And Dunnigan's still trying to get his. Well, that was a payback. In. Remember, he got line? me. Who's Remember, that? he got me. Thirty-four. Whoever that was, that he got the ball. That that block. I'm coming back to get that block. That's who got me up when. Uh, well, earlier, I can always show you this scar right here from you, Ben. You know, I know, Miles. Yeah. Hit me. <laughs> I remember that story. Oh, well, Miles yeah, was the, playing for Calgary. No, I was playing for Montreal. I was playing for yes, Montreal. Montreal. Last play of the first half, somebody on our team is hurt on a punt cover, so I go out there to fill in. Ben peels back, sees me just floating towards the end zone to go into the dressing room in the last play. <laughs> oh, I don't think you're going there. Me up. <laughs> He's my the first guy over. down. Miles was the fastest guy. If you go tee up some film, Miles was the first guy down on kickoff cover on any team he played on. 
The am I lying? Buster. Am I lying? No, I, I love to go down there. But Miles was the he fastest so through 200. I don't know what you jaw. wait. He's but one of the, the biggest guys. Look better. at this guy. The story gets better. So I got to go in and have 11 <laughs> stitches put on the inside, outside of my face, six on the inside. I got to come out and play the second half. We <laughs> don't have anybody, and I got to <laughs> play against Sobe. Sobe gets two sacks against me, and I'm hating Ben. I'm <laughs> hating Ben. I'm gonna kill him. My first roommate when I got to Mon when I got to Hamilton in 1985, who was my first friggin' roommate? Ben. I told him to sleep with one eye open. My face still hurt. First down, Hamilton. Ooh, good contact down there as Steve Stapler oh, was looking for the touchdown better. pass. I just don't like the fact that they call way too many, you know, they don't let them play football. That was, that was a great defensive play. Yeah, they're turning it into a flag, you know, touch football. Especially, you know, and I don't like guys doing this. I need somebody to come in for me. Yeah, you know, I agree. Nobody, nobody ever came out back then. No. You stayed in there till you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. was good or bad, but you know, a, nowadays they're always waving. I, I gotta have somebody, you know. Yeah, I, I'm so out of breath. You got a bone. If you don't that, have a bone, I remember bone a showing and then you stay came in the out game. of the game because he hurt his finger. And I was thinking, I remember going <laughs> home after a game, yeah. and my finger was like this, right? And I was thinking, going. I wonder how that happened, because I never <laughs> felt it. <laughs> I, know. I got one you know, of them. You know, people come out of the game because they hurt their finger? <laughs> no, it was no. helping me catch the ball better. <laughs> so, I mean, they're stripping the football at every chance today as well. Kerrigan's pass was very nearly picked off by Danny Bass. He was looking for Rocky DiPietro, who was coming across the middle. Well, you're not likely to see a team in the Canadian Football League play any better defensively than you are watching Hamilton here this afternoon. What made us better, we had the best D-line in the league, and we had one of the best O-lines in the league, and we went against each other every day in, in practice. Right? We made, to be each said that. made each other made better. Each other better. There, wasn't there wasn't a lot of transit, a lot of, lot of change. Changes. There that's wasn't right. a lot of roster This changes. is like our core was the same. And that's what Al Bruno Three years in a row. To Hamilton. Well, that's why we were yeah. so determined to win this game. <clears throat> There's no way we're going to leave. The guys aren't looking over their shoulders. And the other, the other dynamic is that the offense and defense got along. Like, you know, Mike Walker used to stay, and his wife would stay at our house uh, for That's training camp, for training camp until they got mm -hmm. a house. I stayed up, yeah. became landed immigrant. Yeah. Les stayed up. Won't go back. I don't blame you there. They wouldn't well, let him back at, in. You look at all the guys that yeah. are still around from that team. Yeah. That still live in this area, you know, like Mitch Price. Well, yeah. I got to tell you, you know, I played, I went, I left here and went to Winnipeg. But during the off season, I always came back to Hamilton. And then I left Winnipeg and went to Ottawa. I always came back to Hamilton during the off season. And then when I played in BC, I still made Hamilton home. Yeah. Something yeah. about Hamilton. I'm, I'm from BC too. Miles, you're from Calgary. It's the best Calgary. kept secret and in Canada, Oakville, and I love it. it. And it is. It's a lunch bucket, blue collar, roll up your sleeves, and go to work. We're not looking for handouts. We'll get it done. I've always been treated well. Always been treated well in Hamilton. I'll never forget them. And again, going deep for Stapler. He makes the catch at the 41-yard line. Kinds of time to throw the football. All okay, kinds of time. That's the best right. compliment yeah. you can have. Yeah, yeah, you can have. That's yeah. a great. So because you, you, when there's a sack happening, yeah. you're not the goat. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great pass. Clock is running. We're down to 40 seconds left to play in the half. That crossing pattern goes to Rocky Di Pietro. He does. Not, they rule that he was wrapped up at the 33-yard line. Miles Gorell, who has selected the best offensive lineman in Eastern Canada this season, is the injured ball player. Oh, well, oh I hurt my calf here. <laughs> that we were down. Yeah, we're up 29 nothing. Sal goes, TV oh, time you out. You want to come out? And I said, Sal, I'm going to tell you this once. Nine years to get here, 
you're going to have to shoot me to get me out of here unless I'm dead. <laughs> Need a big, big play right now. And what happens, exactly what the story of the first half was. It's just an unbelievable display by the Hamilton Ticat defense. That time, David Sobe, Covington was there too. Also in the backfield was Mitchell Price. Hats off to the Hamilton Tiger Cats for a terrific display of defensive football. They lead it 29 to nothing at the half. This is Grey Cup 86 from BC Place in Vancouver. Well, this is the longest halftime, I'm going to tell you. Oh, it was like 25 minutes. And longer. Oh, my God. <laughs> We were fired up, man. We were so we were so fired up. We couldn't wait to get back out there. The locker room was just, you could tell, people couldn't even sit down to chill. We was like, we were so ready to go back out there. I was like, think about it, man. Straight cup. You ain't got no game after this. You give everything you got. So, Sove, I was talking to Sove. He was my roommate. And so we're going, I said, I think I got Canadian in the game in the first half. Sove says, no, I think I got it. <laughs> and we're back and forth, and they were back and forth, and and he goes, oh, Oz. Ozzy's got five field goals. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's out the window. Yeah. Twenty nine nothing, the halftime score. Five sacks have been yielded by the Edmonton Eskimos, and that has been the big problem. It started on the very first offensive series with Grover Covington getting to Matt Dunigan. Now, Paul Osbaldiston, who is one field goal away from equaling a Grey Cup record, will kick it off. I remember coming out of the locker room and looking at the scoreboard. It was at the other end of the field. And all the numbers were in white, except for one number. It was red. I'm thinking, is that something wrong with the scoreboard? It's closer I got. The one number was in red was minus one. Total yards. For total yards in the Forever first half. Total yards in the first half. Yeah. Minus one. <laughs> Minus one. I remember now, that. That's decimate. You talk about sacks and everything that's, else. Minus one net yards. That's a devastating that's defense. That's how I see it. Well, we talked in the opening that the team that protected that quarterback the best was going to win. And Mike Kerrigan has got the protection. And on the other side, they've been all over the Edmonton Eskimos. But that offensive line has done a super job. Kerrigan hasn't had a hand laid on him today. And he's throwing deep for England. Touchdown. Yeah, the that. That's the same play as yeah. Stapler's team. That's right. That's yeah. it. Well, they got the first this is the first here. time I felt I felt comfortable. At 36? Yeah. <laughs> 36. Yeah, at the end of the third quarter. Yeah. <laughs> that was it, right? I was, sitting, in the, I was sitting in the stands going like this. I wonder which one I'm going to get it on. <laughs> But it wasn't until then, right? Because you don't yeah. know. You know, we still had momentum going into the second half. But yeah, we were still you never know. bound and determined yeah. to kick ass every play. We weren't letting up. And we didn't, and defensively, we keep putting pressure on them. I was really excited because, like, this is our third time there. We didn't want to be like the Buffalo Bills. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Remember, we kept saying that. No, yeah. we're not. This, we're not going to make this a Buffalo Bill thing. Go no. three times and lose. Football, you got to play a whole game. It's not like you go halftime. You have a good halftime, you know, because a team like that, they have the ability to come back on you. That was a, because of Al Bruno. He didn't want. He wouldn't let you ease up, right? He was one of the guys who would, he would tell him to keep, keep, keep your foot on the gas. And so we didn't want to be like one of those teams where you, you, you know, you go. Hey, they was, you know, they always came in second place. You know, you want to be a. You want to be a champion. Very few offensive opportunities. As a matter of fact, their net offense was minus one through the first 30 minutes. And that's one of the reasons it was a minus one. Another quarterback sack with Ed Gadavekas that time breaking through to drop Matt Dunnigan. I'm, not, I'm no longer sitting in the stands. I'm on, I'm on the sidelines now, even though we're not allowed to be down there. <laughs> yeah, no, the clock can't run down fast enough. Yeah, we want it just to stop. We want yeah. it to go. Keep running it, Hobie. Keep running it. First and ten. Jed Tommy takes the ball across the 35, and he's driven back by... And when somebody got hurt, notice that Ray Jones never ran out there on the field to go and check the seat. Our equipment was, manager was out there. Yeah, the equipment Jeff manager Howe. ran out there to do it because 
I, I, I found this out after I got there. I was like, how come Ray never runs out to check up on the injured guys? He says, well, one time he ran out there and he caught a turf monster <laughs> and he <laughs> fell right on top of the guy who was injured. <laughs> People might forget that at one point this season, the Hamilton Tiger Cats were 1-5. and five. Hobart throwing deep for Ron Ingram, incomplete. Yeah, my dad had to fly back to Edmonton the next morning to go back to work with his 39-15 to 15 sweatshirt on. <laughs> Did he really? Over his hell with 200 <laughs> people from Edmonton. They did not like him on the plane. He just kept walking to the bathroom, giving everybody the peace sign. They got bad ass. So what do these right guys now. think? <laughs> they got a bad running attitude. Running the ball. Thank you for running the clock down. Yeah, really. Thank you. My mom and dad got to both drink out of the Grey Cup. They still have those pictures there in heaven. I know. And it was the little Grey Cup. It was, you know, just this tall. I know. I was so glad that, because then we had the party right in Hamilton. And yeah. My parents were there. Yeah. And then my dad died the next year, so he, ah. he, was, he actually experienced the Grey Cup before he passed. And there'll be some celebrating going on down in that Hamilton Tiger Cat dressing room in a short time. The short kickoff attempt. Who's got the ball? Hamilton has recovered. That was, a it good, was that uh, party that, that Harold had at, where were we at the Hyatt Regency, I think, in oh, Vancouver. Yeah. And he threw a big party, and Ben showed oh, up. Yeah with a suit coat on and a tie with no shirt. He had a salmon tie and no shirt on. I'll That's never my mom's that. favorite picture. <laughs> yeah. With ben. And my mom and dad just basically, they had the Grey Cup set up so you can go get your picture taken with the Grey Cup. And my mom and dad just loved it. Boy, picking that defensive game star is going to be a tough chore. Zambiazzi has played brilliantly. Covington has played extremely well. He's been absolutely brilliant. Lance Shields, I think, has played a fine ball game at the corner. David Sove at a defensive end position. Leo Ezra. Well, this should be well, played again. The pass to Milson Jones, a screen pass. And Milson Jones is forced out of bounds. Look at this, James. Look at this. Okay. That's the iconic picture right there. there. Anywhere? No, I'm already in the I'm already in the dressing room drinking beer. I'll guarantee guys, you. Guys, Dale Sanderson comes up to me. Look at Dirk you there. Dale says, "Geez, let's let's pick Al up." And Dale left his helmet on, and and Al is grabbing his face mask as a handle, and I got no helmet, so the on the media. Oh no, hair. It wasn't even my <laughs> idea. It was Dale's idea, but I'm in all the pictures with Al, and you can't even see Dale. <laughs> and I, oh, I felt terrible for the guy. And a smiling Harold Ballard is ready along with Commissioner Doug Mitchell. On behalf of football fans everywhere in Canada, it's a pleasure to present the Grey Cup to Harold Ballard, Joe Zuber, and the players of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Right on. I still get excited about that game because that was my first time ever winning a um, ever winning a championship in my life. First time ever. Didn't win in high school. Didn't win in college. So, you know, so for me, it was such a uh, I, you know I'll never forget that game. Mr. Twiner, why don't you present the Carling O'Keefe Offensive Game Star to Hamilton's Mike Kerrigan? Great, great pleasure, Mike. Well done. Congratulations on a super, super game. And now we should call upon uh, the president uh, to perhaps make the presentation to the defensive game star, Grover Covington from the Hamilton Ticats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Five sacks, Grover. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I just have to say that uh, I'd like to just, first of all, give uh, praise and honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was just, it was a total team effort. And it's been so long. I've been in the league six years. And uh, this is just, it's, I can't believe it. It's great. I just thank you. Oh. It was awesome. You know, it's. It's amazing the people that you see in that town, how happy they are when you when you win a championship. Those people were going out of their minds. I was like, wow. <laughs> it was great to win it. Uh, a bit of a relief, you know, because uh, I had played with guys that had never won. And I know, uh, you know, they always lamented the fact that uh, you know, they, they didn't get the, the ring or they didn't get the championship. So 
you know, I was happy to have it and uh, happy for my teammates. Well, if this game was not over at halftime when the Ticats were up 29 nothing, it did end midway through the qu third quarter. When Mike Kerrigan gunned a 44-yard touchdown to Ron Ingram, the Tabby's up 36-0, cruise to win Grey Cup 86.